Hello and welcome to the Grow Your Life podcast. My name is Jeremiah Krakowski, and if you haven't listened to this podcast before, be sure to join the hashtag Grow Your Life community on Facebook. It's a virtual mastermind, a networking opportunity, and a think tank where people like yourself are helping each other grow in their life and their business, asking questions and giving answers to people. You can check it out by looking up hashtag Grow Your Life on Facebook or going to my website. Now, this podcast is about ways to grow in your life and your business, whether that be your health, your finances, or your relationships, ways to get your mindset right, and strategies to grow in business. And so today's episode is strategies to grow any business, whether it's online or offline, using internet-based tools. And I'm going to give you a list of my favorite top tools and resources that I recommend to people when they're getting started to get results that get the most results for them from my experience over the last 15 years of helping businesses grow online. Just a little bit of my background. Uh, 15 years ago, I started helping businesses just by building websites. Uh, I hard-coded websites and helped them get more customers doing that and then moved into video production, sales copy, marketing, strategy, consulting, and then that's what I do now is coaching and consulting of businesses as well as I have the community, the podcast, my daily videos here to help people that are just getting started. But these these strategies apply at any level of business. This is what I would tell an organization if they're making $10 million and they want to scale and they're not using what I'm talking about in this podcast, in this episode, or if you're making not even making $10 yet in your business, this applies for everybody. And so I'm going to go through this list here fast. I have uh, my computer open here with my website and I'm going to pull up some different websites for you of different resources to, to use to get results. Now, one of the first resources I didn't want to, I did want to talk about, but it's not what the purpose of this podcast is, is I actually do have a course on website building. It's called website building made easy. And I walk people through building a website that gets results professionally. And the tool that I love for building websites is Squarespace. And so I, on on here on this page, I actually compare WordPress to Squarespace, the fact that the security, the cost, the speed, the customization, the designs, the value, and everything are above and beyond for that. And so if you don't have a website that's working for you or it's on something else like WordPress, Wix, Shopify, GoDaddy, ClickFunnels, or Hardcoded, I still recommend everybody uses Squarespace to build their website. And this course distills all my knowledge over the last 15 years of what works and what doesn't. As well, you get lifetime access to me in a members-only Facebook group to support you on building your website to come alongside you and help you do that. So that's a little plug for that course. Uh, it is $697 on the website or $247 with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So go check it out if you want to do that. But if anything, go go to squarespace.com. They have a free trial of their um, their platform here that you can try out. And you just press get started here. No credit card required, by the way. Absolutely free to check out the platform Squarespace. So for anybody that is looking to build a website and getting started, Squarespace is the starting point that I say for people. They have these amazing designs. They're modern. They're up to date of what works and what reads well on the internet today. And that's why I love it. The, I love the new templates as well. I love all the new stuff that, that Squarespace has that's going on here. Now, if you're comparing as well, um, if you're somebody that doesn't have an LLC, one that I really love is uh, LegalZoom. And so you can you can um, sign up for LegalZoom to get an LLC. This is how I sign up for for my LLC here. There's other resources out there, and if we go to Google, you know, you can look that up. Uh, LLC. And yeah, Inkfile was the other one that I was that I was looking at that um, seemed pretty good. I haven't used them, but for that. Now, the reason why I say that for an LLC is this, is that if you want to sign up for a platform like Stripe, with Stripe is a payment processing platform that I recommend 
for taking credit cards and most of the platforms that are out there use Stripe, you need an LLC. So a lot of people, when they're just getting started in their business, they're like, well, why can't I just use PayPal? Because it looks unprofessional. People can dispute it. They can ask for their money back. And the point of a business is to make money. To take credit cards professionally, Stripe is the best platform for that. Now, back in the day, we used a lot of shopping cart software uh, for stuff like that. I don't recommend using a shopping cart software that has like its built-in payment processing. There's, you know, there's one out there that I that I like that's called um, that I checked out. It was called Samcart, but even Samcart uses Stripe, I believe, to process all of its payments. <laughs> so. Even with that, the inter the integration, yeah, it see, it uses Stripe and PayPal to process payments. So the way that things have shifted in the global economy now with apps and things is to take payments. Samcart is your software, but you're still processing the credit cards through Stripe and PayPal. Now, one of the advantages that I like to use PayPal for is uh, for PayPal credit. So people can use their PayPal credit to make uh, payments over the course of six months. But if your only payment method is PayPal and you're using it through your, you personally and you don't have an LLC, you can't sign up for Stripe without an LLC, without a business. A personal person can't just use their social security for that. And why do you need a social? Because you need to pay taxes when money comes in. Now, I'm not a tax professional. I'm not a business attorney. So I'm not giving you tax advice on this, but you do need an LLC and you need to do things legit if you're taking money from people and exchanging value. Now, one thing that I will say as well on the topic of website building, another great platform out there, if you're doing e-commerce, if you have a product that you ship out to people is Shopify. And the reason why I love Shopify is this. Shopify is one of the uh, best platforms for e-commerce, for shipping physical products, or if people come into your store. If you're not shipping something physically, wrapping it up and sending it out, or if it's only one product that you're selling, if you're only selling one product, I recommend Squarespace still even for the sales and the marketing and all that. And there's different tools for all of that. Squarespace is for building a website, a, a to show, to display your website to people, to, to put yourself out there, to, to, it creates a presence, a web presence, but Shopify is the best platform for e-commerce. Or if you have a brick and mortar, people can buy from you on their Shopify store and come pick it up in person. I don't recommend Shopify for building web brands or building anything outside of e-commerce. If you're doing anything that's not just e-commerce related, I don't recommend Shopify. And so that's why Squarespace is still the best platform out there, in my opinion, for that over WordPress. There's a number of reasons I say that. Um, and they all integrate with Stripe to take payments. Squarespace is also uh, cheaper to use as well. So those two platforms really are the ones that I recommend for you. If you are looking to have your website, Shopify also, uh, is more expensive and so if you're doing e-commerce squarespace is actually an excellent e-commerce platform shopify is just a little bit better because they've been doing it longer for e-commerce and so even if you're getting started the value you're going to save in squarespace if you're debating well i can't use shopify so i'm just going to not build it sign up for squarespace and use it it's so easy to use and with the course that i created website building made easy you're going to know how to use squarespace quickly and easily to get results, okay? Now, one of the best platforms that I love for delivering e-courses is Thinkific. There's a number of different ones out there. I'm not gonna go into comparing all these other platforms because if I did that, you know, just to compare those two different, three different platforms, that took me like 10 minutes. We'd be on this podcast for like five hours if I was just comparing every single platform, you guys. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show you some of my favorites that I love out there. I'm not gonna go deep into why they're my favorite compared to something else, but I'm gonna go into what you can use them for. And I've tested 
mostly everything that's out there and decided on these because they are the superior platform. If you find something that you think is better than what I'm presenting in this podcast episode, go to the Grow Your Life community on Facebook to say, hey, what do you think about this compared to this? You know, one of the biggest ones people always compare to Thinkific is Kajabi or Teachable or uh, other platforms for selling courses. I've used Kajabi, I've used Teachable, I don't recommend them compared to Thinkific. And Thinkific is the number one platform for selling courses online if you're wanting to sell them. It's an all-in-one solution and it even has a very basic website builder. I still prefer using Squarespace though for the front end of the website. And so you'll notice here, just even on my website, I host my website course on uh, Thinkific. So if you go to register here, it opens up Thinkific right here for you to register. And that's under members. That's where you can sign in. So I'm, I'm integrating both platforms. Uh, my button here th links to Thinkific for you to register and purchase. But, I can, but you can't build pages like this, how I built this in Thinkific. So I prefer building my site in Squarespace and then having it all uh, selling my courses through Thinkific. That's one of my favorite platforms for that. Another one too is uh, SendOwl. SendOwl is really cool. If you're just delivering like a one-time payment product and you're sending people a digital download, Squarespace does have some digital download functionality, uh, but you're limited to how big the file can be. And so SendOwl allows you to send larger files as well as integrates more with autoresponders. So I also really like SendOwl as far as that goes for selling digital products. So if, you want, if you're talking about like a tool belt for digital products online, SendOwl, Thinkific, Squarespace, Shopify, um, and then you can actually use a combination of, of those. And that's where a lot of confusion comes into people because there's so many different platforms out there, you guys. Here's the biggest thing. A lot of people, they're like, well, which one's better than the other? They all do very similar and then they have unique differences. So look at what their unique difference is and see, is that unique difference so important to me if you're deciding between the two? Um, and most of the time it's not. And the benefits of an, one platform versus another are far better. And so my favorite combination is Squarespace and Thinkific. For most people, if they're selling digital products, um, or Squarespace and SendOwl. And if you're doing e-commerce, it would be a combination of Shopify and SendOwl or even Squarespace, Shopify and that. And that's where, that's why the price starts to go up. A lot, I've seen a lot of people, they end up signing up for so many platforms, they don't even use them. The best platform for you to use for different things is the one that you use that will get you results that you know you use, that you're using actively, that people are visiting and buying from you, not the one that you plan to use or hope to use and so you're signing up, but the one that you are actively using and getting results with. And so if you're getting results with something now, you know, you might be able to improve it by using some of these platforms, but if you're if you're confused, confusion doesn't help anybody. And so I'm hoping through this to help explain to you the differences of these platforms and the ones that I recommend. I wouldn't really recommend anything outside of the ones that I mentioned here as far as selling digital products. Um, it, just because there's just a lot of confusion that comes in. And if you're selling e-commerce, Shopify has a much better checkout experience. And so that's where I'm at with that. You can do memberships with Thinkific as well. Very easy to use. So that's why Thinkific is my favorite for recurring memberships, selling courses. And if it's if you need um, to integrate with other digital download type stuff, send all is cool. Now let's talk about email marketing. Um, MailChimp is actually the one that I, I actually really like people to use if they're just getting started because it's so simple and easy to use. It, it does get pricey though um, when you scale and grow, but it really is the easiest to use. The reason it's pricey is because of that ease of use. They've really kind of baked that in, into the cost. Uh, Squarespace though does include email marketing built into it. And so if you're, you're limited on your budget, you can actually just use what's built into Squarespace as well for that. But MailChimp is what I prefer and it integrates with Squarespace directly. If you wanna go kind of next level it with your email marketing, enter ActiveCampaign. And ActiveCampaign is 
a pricier solution, but for good reason. It has a lot more automation, a lot more technical functionalities. Basically, when you max out on what you can do in MailChimp is when then you'll upgrade to active campaign. And it takes people quite some time, like your business will be making quite a bit of money by the time you need to move over to active campaign to do more with it. Uh, but if you like after, I, I love active campaign. So it's kind of like the progression Squarespace, it's included, you, then MailChimp and then active campaign. Active, camp, active campaign does not integrate directly with things, but that's why there's an amazing new platform out there that's really getting a lot of buzz in the marketplace. And um, it is called Zapier. And Zapier is a really unique platform that I think everybody should sign up for. What it does is this and you'll, you, most people end up using the $50 a month version. Zapier takes all of these different apps that you use and lets them talk to each other. And so that means like, let's say somebody signs up through Squarespace, you can send them an email through MailChimp, add them to a Google Doc, uh, put them into Asana and, and then make a post um, like, and then, and, then send, and then make a note in Evernote and then send them a, like a, a chat thing through many chat so you can have it go ding 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 through like all these different platforms and so one action of somebody buying something can lead to one two three four five six different actions through zapier and so they integrate through a very easy to use drag and drop editor you just connect stuff and you connect the dots and it's not difficult to use you don't need to know how to code if you and and so it allows you to bypass the coding altogether to do some very advanced things that have been hard to use in the past and it integrates directly with squarespace which is cool as well as all these other platforms now so i highly recommend that now one of the things that a lot of people um ask is which social media platform do you recommend for me pers personally i love using facebook and instagram more than anything else <laughs> <laughs> use Facebook and Instagram and really max out on those and as well as LinkedIn and Twitter. And those are kind of the four and then add in as well as Pinterest. That's kind of number five right there. Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Pinterest. And you want to be on all five of these. And if you, and, and uh, depending on what you're doing, um, if you're more technology based and B2B, LinkedIn and Twitter, if you're more e-commerce and B to C business to consumer, definitely more Facebook, Instagram, and even Pinterest before LinkedIn and Twitter. So those three, you'll kind of decide on what your goals are. If it's, if it's B to C versus B to B, B to B works better on Twitter and LinkedIn. B to C is more Pinterest. Uh, but everybody it integrates through Facebook and Instagram and their tracking platforms. They're owned by Facebook. So the advertising platform is the same for both. And so you can use the data on both people interact in two different ways, but you can also advertise and market and build audiences through those platforms. Now the best management software between those. Oh, by the way, if you don't know how to set up your Facebook and Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, Pinterest, I actually did an episode of this podcast a few weeks back on setting up your social media profiles the right way. Uh, most people don't even know how to set them up the right way for success. And so I did a whole hour where I walked people through just setting yourself up for success from the beginning or if you're, you need to change things. So go check that out. One of the best platforms though, this is a brand new one uh, that I'm super excited about to share with you guys and actually inspired this podcast was I wanted to show you this platform and it's called Hopper HQ, okay? So Hopper HQ, it's 19 bucks a month and it lets you schedule uh, content, videos, photos, the quality is full quality and schedule everything for uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And it's, it's so simple to use. It even lets you schedule the first comment on Instagram to put the hashtags. Even just for the Instagram stuff that it does, it's worth it. Um, you know, there's other great platforms out there for scheduling like later like Buffer, like Hootsuite, uh, but I've actually ditched all of those for Hopper HQ. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, as far as analytics go, I do know that uh, you know stuff like Fan Page Karma and Sprout Social are still relevant because they have higher levels of analytics. And so this isn't to like negate those, you know, Sprout Social. Uh, has a lot of stuff as well as for LinkedIn management, some new stuff. 
Sprout is just a lot more expensive. I mean, we're talking 150 bucks a month. Same with stuff like Fan Page Karma uh, for scheduling. And so these are uh, they have a lot of all-in-one features. If you can afford that, Sprout is still really awesome, and I do like it. Uh, but I haven't used it for Instagram particularly, and it's more geared towards um, towards Facebook. Sprout is still. Hopper is the number one though for uh, Instagram. And the reason why it works best for Instagram is this. You'll notice the order of how they actually listed this. Instagram first. And Instagram first is kind of the mindset behind Hopper HQ. Is they actually have, let me try to describe this for you a little bit. So the way apps are built these days is different than how they've been built in the past. And apps aren't just what's on your phone. So I call Hopper HQ, it's an app, but it's a web app for your um Computer, there's also, you know, there's an iOS app as well. Uh, But what they do is they actually have Hopper HQ, the way they post to Instagram, is they have virtual, like, smartphones in the cloud on a web server somewhere that logs into your Instagram account. And so when you schedule it through Hopper, it actually posts it as if it's a person posting but it's a robot posting for you and so it's the same quality of engagement as if you're posting it yourself through that and as well as through scheduling for uh facebook and twitter but their instagram method is so much superior than any of these other methods out there for scheduling on instagram because it's it's a simulated uh smartphone is what it uses And so the fact that it's a simulated smartphone is that much greater than other platforms out there that the quality is so much better that gets posted and and it's just, it's superior. I wouldn't use anything else. I've used Buffer, I've used Hootsuite, I've used Sprout for posting to Instagram and Hopper is way better. So (laughs) I really recommend Hopper HQ as far as social media planning and analytics for you guys. Uh, another, Another great platform to check out is Capwing. So Capwing, if you ever watched on my social media, let me just go over here to my my Instagram here and I'll show you what I mean. Uh, I do these little videos with text and captions. Have you ever had a dream but you've laid it down because of- So I make these with Capwing. And Capwing generates the subtitles. In here they have an AI algorithm that generates the subtitles and you can edit them. You can add the text and you can export it, the videos with Capwing right here. Um, and you could actually like train somebody to do that and you could just record videos and upload it for them, uh, through Google drive. And so I love Capwing. Uh, the paid version is worth it. No watermarks. My go-to solutions are if somebody's like just getting started in business online is use Squarespace, Capwing, Hopper HQ, and that'll that that will create like all your content and then as you grow you can start to use stuff like um use mailchimp and thinkific those are kind of my go-to solutions that i use for everything right now for myself um and then i also uh, yeah i upload this podcast to youtube as well so and I'll talk about that as well for what you need for like podcasting and things like that. This is kind of going to go deep into all these different topics for you, different platforms and tools that I love to use. But Capwing is is one of the best um, for that. I had another thing in mind that I wanted to show you guys. What was it? Let's go into let's go into podcasting here. Squarespace has a great podcasting feature, uh, but there's a few platforms and I did record an episode on starting your podcast where I go over all the different podcasting platforms in depth. Uh, but just to do it briefly here, uh, anchor FM is free for you to start podcasting. And so you could start a podcast with anchor FM using this. Uh, and then another one is actually Podbean. Podbean is pretty cool as far as podcast hosting goes. I actually really like it as well, uh, specifically for podcasting delivery. I know quite a few people that have used it and they really like it. So it's between Podbean, Anchor FM. I use the integrated functions in Squarespace myself. And so, but those are those are the better platforms as well. I think I might be switching to either Podbean or Anchor here in the future. And so, but right now I'm using Squarespace. 
just because it's integrated in that and I don't have to uh, learn a new platform myself. But for for people, use check these out. Another thing too, if you want to go deeper into um, more technical aspects of production, the Adobe Creative Cloud, I'm not gonna go too deep in this, but uh, and you'll have to learn really how to use these, but for video production and graphic design, the Creative Cloud, you know, Photoshop, Premiere Pro, they are the, the best applications for photo editing, uh, graphics design, video production. And so these are a big part of my arsenal personally because I know how to use them. They, they do have quite a learning curve though. So that's why like if you want to do graphics design and you don't want to learn how to use Photoshop or you want to do video and you don't want to learn to use Premiere, that's why I recommend Capwing for video and for graphics design, it's Canva. So kind of after you upgrade from Canva and Capwing, you know, you can integrate with uh, the Adobe Creative Cloud. But Canva is what I love for graphics design. It's a graphics design app that you can use to create just amazing, stunning graphics with very, you don't need to be technical or learn how to use them. And so Canva is just really incredible. It's free as well. The free, you don't need the pro version to get the value out of Canva. The pro version is amazing, but the free version is also amazing. And I think they've really set themselves apart in the marketplace. They're one of the really few that are out there that have a superior platform to everything else for free. And so if you're not using Canva, you need to start using Canva. That's how I make all my graphics on my, my social media. Um, now, one thing that a lot of people ask, like you're probably wondering, well, how, what are you using to switch between all these different platforms? I'm actually using a one called OBS, Open Broadcaster, okay? So Open Broadcaster is a free app for recording video on your computer, connecting a microphone and it captures uh, your screen. It is a little bit technical to use, but you can find quite a few trainings on YouTube. I might actually do a whole episode on using OBS for people. And I might break down some of these platforms. So if you're listening to this podcast right now, leave in the comments. This is actually a, a, a way that I want you to engage with me. In the Grow Your Life community, I've had a, a lot of requests for uh, lessons on Capwing, but I think I also need to do OBS because video is the place where you can get the most integration. So I think I might dive deeper into how to learn to use these video platforms. Uh, for you guys and gals. Uh, but if you want to learn how to use a certain platform in depth, like I did the Squarespace course, I'm going to go deeper into doing stuff like course creation and Thinkific, like Facebook advertising, like uh, video production, all of that, and creating courses to teach you how to use all these and then the concepts and the mindset behind them um, and making podcast episodes on it. So if it's something I can do in less than an hour, hour and a half, I'll do it on this podcast. Uh, which I plan to do some one for Capwing here soon. I'm probably going to make maybe an opt-in as well and run it as ads for you guys. So for that sort of thing, which by the way, if you're wondering make, making funnels, opt-in funnels, Squarespace, you can do that in Squarespace. And I teach how to do opt-in funnels in Squarespace. Uh, ClickFunnels is cool, but honestly, you can do almost everything that ClickFunnels does with Squarespace. And I show you a lot of the stuff that they teach you to do in ClickFunnels with Squarespace in my course, Website Building Made Easy. And so that's why I don't really recommend ClickFunnels to people because you can do it a lot easier with Squarespace and it's a lot cheaper and still get the same results. Um, but yeah, OBS is really cool. Um, as far as... Uh, on to dovetail on the video topic with screen sharing and doing all that actually let me show you another solution that's even simpler i think for for you that might work the quality of obs is the highest quality because you can record it in hd or even 4k uh, which is why it's the best out there just for recording 
video on your computer. It's, it's what I use to record all my sessions for the website building course. It's what I use to record all my podcasts is OBS with a camera on my computer. And I have a, I have a blog post on my blog on my favorite uh, video production tools. And so if you have any questions and you're wondering, hey, what, what tool do you think for this? What tool should I use for this? What tool should I use for that? Go ask it in the Grow Your Life community. Go ask it on my Facebook page. Go ask me in a DM. I wanna know what you wanna do and what you need to learn. And I've, I've used everything out there. I can promise you this, that I, can, I definitely can point you in the right direction. Uh, that's, that's something that I can say, is if you go and ask in the group, hey, what should I use for this X, Y, Z, I can help. And that's what that, that's a good resource for you, or you can ask on my Facebook page. Uh, one of the best platforms for webinars, uh, which also does do screen sharing, is Zoom. Zoom.us is what I use for video conferencing, and I, it's actually an important part of my business because I do a lot of consult, consulting and coaching with people. Uh, for for my free Grow Your Life calls that I do, the free Grow Your Life coaching that I talked about, uh, you know, and I'll share more about at the end of this podcast. Um, I just do it on the phone with people, and I do a lot of phone coaching with people. But if, but I love doing the face to face with Zoom, and Zoom is not expensive at all. Uh, it's actually free for personal meetings, just personal one-on-one -on -one stuff. The free version is incredible. The free version will serve your needs really well. If you want higher quality, um, you know, functionality to things, the paid one, the $15 version is also really great. Um, but just basic functionality it's actually funny i'm looking at this i'm wondering if i could even downgrade my zoom to the uh the free one because i think they moved some of their paid functions to the free one recently i don't think they did uh hd video in the free one a year ago or certain things like this so it looks like they've actually made their their paid one is even they've added more features to it uh oh yeah you can't do webinars through the through the free one so there's a difference this is where the difference is between the the paid and the pro this is where it is webinars so a webinar is here's the difference between a webinar and a meeting on zoom and this is where a lot of people get confused with zoom is the differences between the webinar and the meeting so a meeting is where everybody can talk all at once but if you're doing a webinar you want to be able to talk to 100 people and pull people up into the webinar and so you don't want everybody talking all at once. And so the paid version works really great for one to many type webinar stuff. Um, a meeting, which is what the free one does if you're just having video chat meetings, uh, you know, group meetings, things like that. Oh, I see. Oh, you know what? The free one limits you to 40 minute meetings. That's, I think that's why I upgraded to the paid because most of my meetings are longer than 40 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is funny. 40 minute time limit. That's really smart of why they did that. So, so yeah, even then, if you're, if you're having meetings longer than 40 minutes, which most of mine are, and they have more than one guest, you're going to need to do the $15 a month version. So that's why I pay for that. Um, yeah, don't be cheap in your business. Don't be so cheap in your business that you're not going to use what you need to get results. Uh, the paid version is incredible. I love Zoom. I love what it does. I love the uh, the admin controls, the features. Yeah, so even all these little features I don't think are included. You can do screen sharing with the free one. Anyways, super cool. I love Zoom. It's my favorite platform for um, doing video conferencing with people, webinars, conference rooms. It just, it, it, it unplugs your business from from uh, having to be face to face and yet you're still, you get that face to face. So for example, I have a company I consult, they're up in Dallas, uh, but I only go up to Dallas once a month, but I have to have meetings multiple times a week. So I have them come into the marketing office, our marketing team sets up Zoom, and then I'm on the video chat and I can meet with people like that and it'll be maybe 10, 15, 20 people and we'll do it over Zoom. Skype is also really great and Skype is free. Um, but, but Zoom allows you to do a lot better for 
uh, collaborative type meetings, and it's just easier to set up. Zoom is a lot easier to set up than Skype. So, and it has a free option. So, check it out. I highly recommend Zoom uh, for that. Now, as far as project management, I actually want to go into some project management stuff here. So, I've shown kind of some of the different technology platforms. And let me see, let me go to my website and see if I've forgotten any of these kind of tech platforms. Uh, Squarespace, I use MailChimp right here. This is my podcasting app. I do love uh, Facebook groups, by the way. Let me just go into this because you can, you know, there's 931 members in this group. Facebook groups are really cool because you can do a closed group um, and have people join it. And even you can integrate a, a, a paid group with a, the way to do a paid group, I highly recommend not doing it through paying through Facebook. Uh, but rather they pay you through another platform like Squarespace or Thinkific for access to the group. And then you could do group management with um, with an Excel document and even integrate that, you know, where you can capture their email as well. Facebook groups are a great way to integrate with your business. And Facebook has now prioritized groups over the news feed uh, because it shows more interest in a specific topic. So if you scroll through your Facebook, you'll notice more people are on groups. I did a blog post about this. They've changed their platform to prioritize groups more than anything. And so that's why you're seeing more and more groups popping up. If you want to build a community that's a tribe around what you're doing and talking about, you want to have a group. And so my group is built around this podcast. It's built around the videos that I do every single day. And so if you're not using the groups functionality of Facebook, <clears throat> for your business, you you should start using it. I love having the idea of a free group and then paid groups. So for example, I have my free grow your life group here, but then if somebody, you know, buys my course, website building made easy, there's a special uh, paid group just for people that bought this course. And so only people that, that, that pay for uh, the course can join it. And, and I ask them for their, their email address that they use to sign up, uh, their name that they use to sign up, and then I go check and see, did they purchase it? Okay, I approve them. If not, I don't. And so that's how you can kind of do a paid model and free model with groups. It's a great way to build community with people. There are platforms to build that and have them on the back end of your website, but they're not the best out there. I really hope somebody makes something maybe that integrates with Thinkific that is Facebook group-like. And in fact, if Thinkific, if anybody wants to submit that as a feature request to Thinkific, man, I'd love the group functionality like what Facebook has on the back end of Thinkific. That would be so incredible if they integrated that because then I we could actually have the paid group be in Thinkific and the the free one be on Facebook and kind of keep them really more, more app-centric that way. That'd be really cool. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, if you're not using groups, use use the Facebook groups um, for that. Now, for as far as customer service goes, by the way, you can use groups as far to aid in customer service. You, use your Facebook for customer service. Use your Instagram for customer service. Use your Twitter for customer service. Invite people to engage with you and ask questions of you on your social media through there for customer service. But if you want a more dedicated customer service platform, there's a lot of different things out there. So for me, I utilize just send me an email right here. If you're getting a lot of requests coming through, one that I really used uh, when you have customer service agents answering stuff, that's better than just email that you can do like branded customer service responses back to people when you're ready to upgrade past email. <laughs> I loved it when we, we used it in the past is uh, Zendesk. And Zendesk is, you know, $5 a month and, and they have all these different platform stuff. Zendesk and the Zendesk suite is an all in one uh, customer support platform to work with people um, to answer their questions. You can build out a, you know, a learning desk, a help desk, a, a knowledge base. It has live chat built in. It's really cool how it integrates with your customer service um, functionality. 
is that. Now, another cool platform as far as for customer service is actually also Intercom. They're pretty expensive, but they're one that I'm seeing a lot of people move over to for engaging with customers and, 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 and supporting customers is also Intercom. I haven't used them, but I have a feeling just because I know the people that use them that they may have some more superior functionality than Zendesk. They are just pricey. So if you're ready to like kind of upgrade to a higher level, I think you can, they, they also integrate with, you can have a chat bot on your website. You can have chat bots on your, all that. And so they integrate with more of the bot functionality and they're an all-in-one type of a solution for you. You can sign up for their all-in-one and you get access to all these different, um, you know, answer bot, product tours, all this. So if you really want kind of that more upgraded functionality for customer service, I haven't used it personally, but Intercom is what I'm seeing everybody use. And so I recommend definitely checking it out just because I, it's just, it's like Zendesk on steroids. Zendesk is like the free version or very cheap. And then if you're ready to kind of go to the next level, use Intercom for that. Um, for project management, there's a couple of platforms out there that, that I think are really cool. A free project management platform is, um, uh, Trello and you can collaborate and manage projects very easily through Trello for free and their free platform is extremely robust as far as that goes as well as their paid business class integration you still get unlimited cards and boards and so the idea is you kind of you drag and drop these different cards for your projects to keep you on track with what's going on. Meetings, publish podcasts, launch website. And that'll keep you on track with that. Now, there's a now there's a lot of debate between uh, project management platforms that people like to use. For tech companies, asana.com is one that they started it with fa for Facebook to use for Facebook. And so it's really it's really uh, robust as far as around the concept of like scrum and agile project management. Um, Asana, I like it. It really is built more around these, the tech company type mindset of things. If you want to integrate more of a CRM slash project management into things, one I know my wife really likes to use is Podio and it's, it's really cool. Uh, f how it integrates as far as you can also do customer relation management and, and it's Podio is kind of like a sandbox that you can build out your own custom system with and Podio has a free version that gives you a lot of great functionality, task management workspaces um, as well as their low cost paid version. Now another one that I've been using with a client, it's very expensive but I do like it is Rike. And Reich is crazy with what they can do. Uh, Google and Hootsuite use Reich for their project management, but the but the cost is a lot higher uh, for what you need to use. And the and how do I explain Reich? Let me show you this specifically for marketing and creatives. You can up up. You, it has the boards and all that, like po, like uh, Asana and Trello. It has a calendar and you can upload files. Um, you can have, you know, back and forth on manage content management, campaign management, content development, event management, agile teamwork. It integrates really well with a lot of these different platforms. So I use Rike with a client. I really like it after using it with that client. And so if you can swing it for Rike, it's a really good one. I would check out though those three different platforms and see which one. They all have a free version you can try out. So grab the free version of Asana, you know, grab the free version of of uh, of Rike. And the reason why they have these free versions is because they know they need to. You need to try it out to see how you like the the experience. So so test out maybe Trello, uh, Rike. Asana or Podio. Personally, I prefer Rike and Asana. And Trello is really robust as far as the best free one because of what it includes as far as the free functionality goes. And it's the easiest to learn. So if you're just getting started and you want something that's easy to learn, stick with Trello. 
the most advanced would be probably Reich and Podio, and then Asana is kind of in the middle. So play around with those. See what you think about them as far as project management goes. And the reason why I talk about this with project management is it's important to keep yourself on track with time management, with what you're doing in your company. And if you're integrating with more than yourself with people, you know, if it's you, if it's more than three people on a team, email becomes very hard to keep things in, in order. If you're integrating with more than three people, maybe you have a client up and down, stuff like that. It's hard to keep things in in order with just email and so using a project management system can help you stay on track with those things and then it actually starts it starts to replace email they have apps as well built in with them and so it's kind of like you take email and crank it up to 10 because it has all these tools to kind of keep you on track and reminders and color-coded stuff to keep projects in order and so if you never used project management software before i hope i've maybe exposed you to a new a new concept as well um if you're somebody that's growing and building a business all of these tools that i've talked about today can help you take your business to the next level these are kind of the number one main tools that i i refer people to uh to start to use now if you're debating between windows and mac this is this is one of the biggest debates use the one that you're most comfortable with Nowadays, Windows and Mac can do the same things because everything's more web-based now. Uh, and, and all the high-end software is more web-based. I personally like Windows. I also use Mac. So it's really whichever one you're most comfortable with. If you're wondering which one should I use, choose Windows or Mac. I've heard one's better than the other. Mac is probably going to be the easier one to, for you, you to use. The more technical is Windows. You know, again, iOS versus Android. I use Android. My wife uses iOS. iOS is going to be easier to use. It is more powerful for certain things. You have to kind of figure out your and hack your way around to do things with Android. But for me, I actually like having more control over it. So I like having to hack it and being able to use it through Android. I like that nerd functionality. That's why I'm, I'm more Windows and Android. If you're not a techie, use Mac and iOS, but even you can do a lot of the techie stuff with, with those. I just like, I like using those myself. So if you're debating just between which platform to use, there's more apps on iOS. So that's why I suggest most people stick with Mac and iOS. Uh, if they're already on them, um, I just prefer Android and, and windows. And it's not that it's like an edge <laughs> that it'll give you to use those two. It's just personal preference. There's not an edge that you're going to get from using Windows or Android over iOS or Mac. And you'll pro most people, because of how easy they are to use, will actually have a better edge using iOS and Mac because they have a lower learning curve for them. So uh, use these tools. Go through this again. Go through this podcast again. I know I talked about a lot of different tools out there for course creation, product sales, project management, customer service. Uh, sales and marketing, you know, there's other stuff out there like Salesforce and uh, Zoho as far as CRMs go. In fact, let me show you those real quick. Um, I haven't used a lot of CRM stuff in the past. So, but uh, Salesforce and Zoho are kind of the two that a lot of people use. I, I like Salesforce from a techie side of things because I know a lot of the stuff that they're starting to integrate with and they're actually starting to create a new model of how the web is run um, and so it's cool but if you're like oh I can't get started until I use Salesforce I've never used it for anything but if you know somebody that uses Salesforce check it out it's it's really cool as far as CRM goes but honestly you can do a lot of CRM management stuff with Podio and so that's why I recommended Podio because you can do a lot of the stuff that you can do with Salesforce and Zoho in Podio, and it's you can do it on the free version. So um, I've never, I've also never used Zoho as well. I've never used any of these platforms, but Zoho and Salesforce are the ones that are most recommended by people. I just have not used them myself. I've used all the ones that I recommended to you uh, for my style of business. If you're more brick and mortar, and you're dealing with more customer 
centric stuff and a lot of customers, you're probably gonna wanna use some sort of a CRM or sales system just to keep track of the customer relationship. It's customer relationship management is what CRM stands for and how you can manage that customer relationship. I personally like using Facebook and email uh, for customer relationship management though. Facebook Messenger, email, uh, keeping just a log of all those emails. Um, oh, here's one I haven't, I didn't talk about. Google Voice. Huh, I can't believe I didn't go into this yet. Google Voice allows you to actually get a business phone number for yourself for personal use or business. And it, it lets you get a business line. It's 10 bucks a month. You'll want to do this through and sign up for um, G Suite because it's, it's part of G Suite is what it is. And so G Suite is the professional uh, Google software. And let me explain what that means. G Suite gives you access to a number of the best tools out there that Google has to offer. And I wanna, I actually wanted to dive into this for you and why you need to use G Suite. And I know this is later in the podcast and so there's some people that jumped on this and they, they left the episode because I didn't get into this in the beginning and so I know that. Um, but G Suite is something that everybody needs to use because it's only $6 a month <laughs> to use it. And what it does is it gives you a business email. Your business email address runs through Gmail, through Google servers. And so like my email address, hello at jeremiahkrakowski.com is running through Gmail. And so I can log in through there and it manages that. It keeps all of my documents in one place. I have the, you know, the upgraded version of their cloud storage through Google Drive. And so I wanted to go into this as well because a lot of people, they ask questions, you know, which one do you like best, Google Drive or Dropbox? Dropbox is cool for what it is. I've used it before, but it gets pricey. <laughs> okay. You're probably, I, I honestly prefer using Google and G Suite um, for this because everything's integrated with Google. It works really well on my phone. And I can upgrade my Google Drive through G Suite to, you know, $10 a month to get a, to get a terabyte. And so I use it for business to store, they give you free storage with your account. A G Suite account gets 30 gigs and then you can get a terabyte for 10 bucks a month. You can upgrade further. You see, you can upgrade to uh, to the higher level. So I love using it because the apps integrate really well on Android and iOS. So if I do a video on my phone, okay, if I'm doing a phone video, I upload it to Google Drive and then I can have it on my computer to use on Capwing or send it to somebody to edit that video. So Google Drive becomes like this um, online cloud storage for all of my business files. And then I can use folders for that. Dropbox also works for that. I just prefer the Google Drive experience because it integrates a lot better with when I'm using my email through that. And Dropbox it can be more confusing for beginners to use. So I actually really like Google Drive. I, I liked Dropbox back in the day over, Drop, over Google Drive, but now I've shifted over. Google Drive is my favorite for that. Um, and it's also more cost effective as well. Until you go beyond, you know, higher terabyte levels. The other thing too is a lot of the apps that I talked about integrate with G Suite. They integrate with Google Drive. And so Thinkific, you know, you could have a video file on Google Drive and then use Google Drive's integration into Thinkific, which is already built in, to upload it directly. And you don't even need to upload the file. So if you you're you're limited on internet speed, once it's on Google Drive, you can get it into these other platforms quickly because they're actually integrated through the servers that way. 
So that's why I really like it a lot. It's just kind of kind of connects everything and and connected with Zapier and all of that. It's just this is kind of your all in one business in a box. Uh, I think that's what I should call this episode. Actually, it's kind of like a business in a box. Uh, all the toolkit or business toolkit. You know, the ultimate business toolkit tools to use to grow your business on using on online online tools. Um, yeah, there's a lot of them out there. And I know that I've talked about a lot. If you have any questions, though, uh, send me messages. Send me a message. Send me a DM. Post it in the Grow Your Life community. Google Voice, though, is actually what I use for my business line. There's a tool out there. It's called Grasshopper. That gives you, it's a virtual um, phone management system. And so Grasshopper is like Google Voice next level because like you can set up um, extensions, you know, business line extensions, like for, for customer service, press this, for this, press this. And it can just go to a mailbox where people could leave a voicemail, but then it's segmented out. It gives you more, more prof- a more professional look that way. You can have multiple business line numbers and so for virtual like call management, Grasshopper is great. But when you're just getting started, Google Voice is a really cool tool just to have a business line. That way people just aren't calling your personal phone number. <laughs> and to use Google Voice um, for business, you know, it's $10 or you can you can do the personal one for personal use. I think it comes I believe it comes free with uh with every um, Gmail account. But if you wanna do it for your business, sign up for it with G Suite for that, it's worth it. That's what I use for mine and it gives you a whole platform where it shows all the the calls, receive text messages, et cetera. So people could send you a business text message, you could do outgoing calls through Google Voice. So another cool app that I saw that popped up as well is Grammarly. It's an AI powered writing assistant. It uses artificial intelligence to help you write better and integrates with all these other apps and works in your browser. There's a Chrome plugin to suggest just better writing words and help you write better. So all of my posts on social media, I actually write them in Grammarly's app and then I upload them because, and and Grammarly just helps me write better, helps me with my grammar. It helps me still be conversational, but actually use better words. So it doesn't change really the structure of how I'm writing as much. It just helps me write better the way I write. And it's awesome. It's just, it's, it's not to tell you how to write. It's to improve your natural writing ability. Uh, and so what I love to do is I love to just, when I'm writing, just put it on paper don't worry about spelling. Don't worry about that. Just brain dump. And then I run it through Grammarly and I edit and do that. And I, and I edit that way. And then same with blog posts, all of that. Grammarly is a is an amazing tool for you to use. So hopefully you learned a thing or two. You found a new plat- platform to use, new uh, apps, new tools that can help you get more results. And if you have any questions, go to the hashtag Grow Your Life community on Facebook. Leave a leave a comment. Say, hey, I have a question about this app. I have a question about which one's best to use for this, which one's best for that. Again, I'm going to leave you with this. The best app, the best tool to use is the one that you can use, that you get results with, that you can use quickly and easily. A lot of people confuse themselves by using too hard of apps, and they don't. then they don't even use them. And then they, they complain that, oh, this thing didn't work, this online business thing. You need to use what's easiest to you, not just what you should use, but what works best for you. And so what I've shown you is the easiest apps to use, the ones that I recommend for all my clients to use, and the ones that can integrate uh, well for you. Another one too that I I did wanna show is um, Twilio. It's kind of a harder app to use, but it's for um, voice and texting and phone calls. Um, But two easier apps are actually Sly Broadcast. 
So you can actually send um, voicemails to people to their voicemail, a pre-recorded message with Sly Broadcast right here. And if you're listening to this podcast in the car or something, the video version, I'm showing my screen. I probably should have said that at the beginning, but you can watch through this on YouTube and see all the screen sharing stuff that I'm showing. So, so Sly Broadcast lets you send uh, voicemail deliveries to people to, uh, to, their, to their phone numbers. So you upload a list of phone numbers and a pre-recorded audio, and then you can send it to their voicemails to where they, um, it'll go to their voicemail on their phone and it'll be a message from you. Don't abuse it, obviously, but it could be a great tool. Let's say somebody signs up, they requested a lead and they gave you your their phone number. You can integrate Sly Broadcast with Zapier to activate them to receive a voicemail from you. Say, hey, I saw you signed up for XYZ and it creates that kind of customer touch level of things. Uh, but yeah, the next level of that higher level, more advanced software is uh, Twilio for SMS and voice and all that. Another thing too, if you're on your phone, some of my favorite apps to use on the phone, just for business and everything like that, all the Google stuff is all on the phone, whether you're on Android or iOS. I use Google Calendar to manage my time management. Um, so Google Calendar, obviously, if you're not using Google, if you're not using the Calendar app, use that, start using it. It's very easy to use. I put reminders in there, like this says change the towels, my laundry today, I put it at two o'clock. So I didn't forget it and I always just look at it, it kinda ha is a hybrid of my reminders and meetings and on an average day, you know, I'll have like hundreds of items on my calendar just to remember that. And I just look at it a couple times throughout the day just to remember what I'm supposed to do and to, to not forget stuff. So it kinda helps me stay on track with that as well uh, using using Google Calendar. Let's see, another great app that I love is uh, WhatsApp. WhatsApp is really cool if you're working with people outside of the US and Canada because it integrates with smartphones and Wi-Fi and you can do full phone calling anywhere around the world and text messaging for free. Uh, Facebook Messenger also does this and I use Messenger a lot, but WhatsApp is a nice all-in-one platform and it's in, it's encrypted and secure. And so that's why I like it a lot better. And you can do full file management. So I'll have somebody send me a file from, I had somebody do this the other day. They were in, oh, where were they? The Ukraine. They had a video they recorded on their phone. And, and so they, they just sent it to me through WhatsApp. And then I was able to integrate WhatsApp to my Google Drive load it up on my computer in Capwing, add the captions and then upload it to social media or to Facebook ads, stuff like that. So all these little apps, they help you just do stuff faster. They're not, if you're confused by all of this stuff, start with the, the, the things that you need to do first. Don't get confused by it and just play around with this stuff. I know as, as well, like, this stuff might be confusing. Don't try to learn every app that I talked about today at once. Start to learn the ones that you need to focus on now to that would help in an area maybe that you're struggling with. So while I was talking, maybe you'll go through this podcast again and I'll mention an app um, that I use, which by the way, I, I use the word app. Apps are not just what's on your phone now. Apps are web apps. Web apps, these are all web apps, Zendesk, Google Drive, Facebook is a web app, Dropbox, Canva. Those are, that's what I mean by apps. They're not websites, they're actually apps that are in your web browser and they have apps on the phone. So that's why I call it an app. The difference between a website and an app is if it does something versus just tells people about something. So for instance, the Twilio website tells me about their app, which then I have to pay for. That's the difference between the two. Your website will tell people about you and what you have to offer, but then they might sign up for your course. Or if you're developing an app, you know, you hire an app developer. Uh, 
and let me let me talk about that as well. If you want to hire freelancers, one of my favorite platforms for that for hiring freelancers, and I've used it, is Upwork. Upwork.com allows you to find professionals that are web developers, mobile app developers, writers, social media, customer service, marketing, and accounting. And a lot of these people are even, you know, they're, they have their licenses, they're accredited. These aren't just all just random people. And so, and they have ratings, they have um, different prices. You can see their past work, you can vet them and the payment actually all happens through the the um, Upwork platform. So you hire somebody to work on something, you know, you could hire somebody to make an app or, or that, and then and you can see how many jobs they've done, you know, 18 jobs, that's, a, that's pretty low. This guy's at 294 jobs, I, you know, this guy more trustworthy. So you can rank it by that, their rating, their job success, their their rate, their skill sets, and you can find people to do stuff for you at a very low cost. And the payments all go through Upwork. And then it, the free version, you can go through all that and they have these paid versions where they kind of, they help you uh, better vet people as well as, you know, consolidated invoicing, net 30, stuff like that. And the, and you actually pay these people through Upwork. You don't have to have them on your payroll. You can actually just use a credit card. You hire people and you pay them through an invoice through Upwork. How do I pay in MasterCard, Visa, American Express, or PayPal? And so this helps because you don't have to do a lot of HR. And as far as that, you don't have to be responsible for the 1099s. Upwork handles all the tax stuff, which is super cool. And they take their fee for that. You know, they charge a little bit higher. They charge the, the person that you're hiring a fee for that. So Upwork is just a credible platform for finding people to help you with stuff and vetting people and, you know, giving them, you know, certain jobs. I wouldn't recommend that you give access to all your stuff right away to somebody, test them out, read their reviews, give them a test project, see how they work for you. Um, another one that's really cheap, like for individual jobs is Fiverr, uh, Fiverr.com as well. You know, their whole thing is every job, you know, starts at it 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 used to be every job starts at five dollars but now they've gone up so the basic level like for certain people is sixty dollars it looks like so fiverr isn't just built around five dollars anymore now you can find professionals to do you know voiceover logo design uh things like this some of these people they're they're not the best at certain things another thing too is you could actually if you learn certain skills you could put your skills on fiverr and get paid for them and get agency clients this way. You know, for example, you could learn to build a website with my website building course and then offer to build Squarespace websites to people through Fiverr or Upwork to get clients. And I actually talk about that. You'll actually gain a skill on building websites with Squarespace and use it to start maybe your own website building agency. You could take this podcast episode, in fact, and then the podcast episode I did a little bit back on how to get agency clients. And now you know different tools. You could learn on your own how to use these tools to help people get more results in their business. And so hopefully, you know, if you take the, this episode and that one about starting an agency, you could actually start a business. You'd have to learn on your own how to do stuff uh, or, you know, go through different stuff on YouTube to learn how to use these different platforms and learn on your own. Uh, but yeah, you could, you could totally do that and, and do a whole full service marketing agency by either finding people to do certain tasks, outsourcing them, hiring them. And so you could take this, this is kind of an overview on that. Uh, if I did a course on how to start a marketing agency, it would be a lot longer than just an hour long podcast. So, uh, but if you, yeah, if you have any questions about that, if I can help you help, you um, 
if you're thinking of starting an agency or using any of these tools or have any questions about other tools, which ones I recommend for certain things, go to the Grow Your Life community and ask questions. That community is there for you to ask questions, to, to, to get answers. And other people in there are also using different platforms. So I saw somebody once, you know, they posted, hey, what would you recommend for podcasting? I saw four or five different answers for podcasting. And it actually answered my question. I was able to, I remembered Anchor FM and Podbean. I was like, oh, wow, I need to recommend those to people. So in that community, we're all growing together. You can ask questions, you can answer people, and you'll get more answers quickly. Hopefully that this episode got you started on that journey to know what tools to use to grow in your business. And if, if you're at the place where you're like, hey, I need a website, my website needs improvement, I need to present myself better, or you wanna learn how to build websites professionally, maybe start an agency, a service, doing website building for people, I have my course, Website Building Made Easy, on my website. And you can either do three payments of 247 or one payment of 697. Um, to gain that skill, that knowledge of what it takes to professionally build websites. That's what that is. And if you want to learn more about certain things, YouTube is just a great platform to do that. I actually taught on this uh, last week in the podcast, actually. And so I want to show you how to use my podcast as a resource for you. And this will be how I'm going to close this out. So the Grow Your Life community and the podcast are a resource for you to integrate, to learn, to grow, and to learn more. My last episode I did was new method to learn anything faster. So let's say that I recommended something on this episode today. Let's say I recommended Asana or Rike or Twilio or Canva or Thinkific. There's groups on Facebook on using Thinkific and Twilio and Asana and all that that you could also ask industry specific and tool specific questions for finding other people that use those platforms to get answers. So you can actually crowdsource Facebook groups to get answers on your favorite platforms. I'm in all the groups for these different platforms as well. Answering people. If I see somebody that is in my community and, and they post, I'll usually reply back as well. And you could even tag me if I'm in a group or if you see that I'm not in a group, you could even go add, you know, add me to that, that group. I'm in a ton of different groups. <laughs> it's funny. I'm going to get like thousands of people adding me to different groups. I might not accept the invite into them, but you can at least put it on my radar. Uh, in that. But what I taught was in the Grow Your Life podcast last week, episode number 23, new method to learn anything faster. And so if you want to learn how to use any of these tools that I talked about today, whether it be Canva, Capwing, Dropbox, Google Drive, G Suite, any of those, this episode is going to give you a framework on how to learn and become an expert at any of those platforms easily. So I'm only one person. I can, I can only teach you know one thing at a time right now. And this podcast, what I want to do is actually want to leverage and teach you how to learn things faster. So I have my course on website building. You know, it's 10 and a half hours long with hands-on lessons and the Facebook group for website building with Squarespace. But if you want to learn something that I, you know, is not taught in this podcast, that's not in the website, you know, I don't have a course for already or that I mentioned in this episode. You can ask your questions in the Grow Your Life community here on Facebook and people will help you. That's one of the best places for you to start, to learn, to ask questions, to grow, to get the answers that you're looking for. But also listen to episode number 23. <laughs> episode number 23, new method to learn anything faster. And it says the way everyone's been taught to learn is all wrong. And I, and I, I really stand by that confidently. I show you a framework to integrate using podcasts, YouTube, Google, Facebook, Facebook groups, and even audiobooks and other ways of how to ask the right questions to get the answers that you're looking for. If you're embarrassed about asking silly questions, for example, to learn things faster, to download into your mind more information. And it's just a 30 minute episode where I go through this framework of learning faster. Uh, there's also actually some recommended videos. It looks like that popped up here with this. There's this one from uh, this this guy right here, Jim Quick. 
he's really incredible at you know unleashing the super brain to learn faster jim quick he teaches specifically on how to activate your brain to learn faster and so check out the youtube version of this and then look at some of these videos that are on the sidebar here i actually pulled some of this from this lesson i referred to this ted talk in the podcast the first 20 hours how to learn anything i referred to that and then i expanded upon it in this podcast episode and so there's some great um referenced recommended videos on the sidebar here on youtube as well to increase your learning ability and if you want to learn how to learn anything faster check out some of these videos that youtube is recommending i actually noticed the algorithm on youtube for my podcast doing something very interesting and this is the first time i've ever pointed this out to anybody and so if you if you're listening to this and you've listened to this i didn't even mention it in this this is like another level of this with my podcast or other people's podcasts. And if you're watching on the YouTube version, you can hear me talk about this, but I'll, I'll do my best to describe it. If you go to the YouTube version of my podcast, which you can find it on my website, and you click through to YouTube, you click the title here. Hey everyone, welcome to the And if you're wondering where I'm talking about this on the YouTube version of episode number 24, it's one hour and 15 minutes, and I'll kind of walk you through this on video of what I mean by this. You can click on the title, okay? And on the sidebar here, it recommends videos to you that are more relevant to the podcast episode. And so not just my podcast, because I have all these episodes, I have all these episodes on YouTube here. I have all them right here that you can go through and listen to. I also have my daily live sessions that I do. There's over um, there's over a a hundred live session videos. They're ten minutes each on different topics. And so if you haven't gone through these, check them out as well. I do these different videos every single day on different topics. But what you can do is if there's a specific topic, the artificial intelligence on YouTube actually listens through my podcast episodes and and refers you to related videos related to what I was talking about. And I've actually found them to be extremely intelligent. So on this episode of the podcast, I don't know what videos YouTube's AI is gonna refer you to on this episode of business tools, but I would bet that it's gonna give you, it's gonna listen to the keywords and the platforms that I used and actually reference ways to learn these different platforms on YouTube. And you can use YouTube to learn from me better as well. So for example, this one that I used, I did on course creation. There's all these different episodes on course creation and speaking better. This one on life transformation. This one, it gives you references to different life transformation topics. You know, I'll talk about going after your dreams. There's different episodes on if you have a dream, never give up on it. And so YouTube's algorithm is, is doing something very unique that I, I've never talked about to people. I think I might actually do my live video today on Facebook about this, on using YouTube's recommend, recommendations to find more and dive deeper into a topic. So you can use that, the YouTube recommendations for all of my podcast episodes for the Grow Your Life podcast to find other people's teachings. And I, I don't endorse all the people. By the way, just because it's on a recommendation does not mean it's an endorsement from me. I don't pick what appears here on YouTube personally. But based on what I talk about in the podcast, the keywords that I put in here, I try to put good keywords for you guys. It generates more videos for you. And then what will happen is maybe you'll do a deep dive into something. Maybe you'll, you know, you'll find this episode here and you'll click on, you know, another referred video. Um, this guy, how to learn anything. He's really good. How to learn anything fast. Josh Kaufman is about this. And then maybe you'll see which videos reference and you can actually go into what's called a YouTube journey. 
how to remember things for tests, how to master any skill. This Tim Harris video, Ferris video is super cool. Tim Ferris, how to work backwards to solve any problem. And so look at these videos on the sidebar here on YouTube and the recommended videos. And if you're on desktop, if you're on mobile, the recommended videos might be further down below the video. You might have to scroll further down and you can do a deep dive to learn further into that. And so that's kind of how you can learn more on how to use these tools for your business. This episode is about is kind of my framework of learning anything faster, but YouTube is like a full service university for you to learn from to discover it's a YouTube university. And so the way to use YouTube university is to look at the related videos. And so if you're wanting to learn anything about any of the tools that I referenced in this episode, check on YouTube, check on Google, go listen through episode number 23 on how to learn anything faster. Go ask questions in the grow your life community, go join Facebook groups related to what you want to learn and ask questions in there. And that episode will teach you kind of how to find those, how to ask the right questions. It'll give you a framework for that. So go listen to episode number 23. I really think that that kind of dovetails on this. And if you want me to teach on anything else that you haven't heard me talk about in this episode or any previous episodes, scroll through my podcast episodes that I have. I have these descriptions written up. They're very detailed on what each episode is about. Each video that I do on social media as well has a description on what the video is about. And I write these up so that you can read these and then the video is, you know, five to 10 minutes, maybe 30 minutes, diving deeper into each topic. And so you can use this podcast as a resource to learn more, to get more results, whether you're on social media whether you, you, you need to just learn something, whether you need to just get your mindset right, learn how to make money on the internet. You know, maybe you're, you're like, I talked about all these tools, but you're like, how do I even get started on the internet? That's what this is about, how to make money on the internet. More focus, how to make $100,000. Uh, you know, this is more on mindset, proven method to easily remove all limitations and do the impossible. So I go into all these different topics on my podcast use it use me my social media my podcast and the group as a resource for you to learn and grow faster and get more results that's what it's there for you guys if you have any questions go post it in the grow your life community and if you want to know how to get free coaching with me a free 30 minute coaching session where i'll deep dive into your business. What I'll do is you'll, is, as I actually did this last week, this is how a free coaching session goes. If you win, I'll send you a message and ask you five questions, questions to answer. Um, and those questions relate to your business. And I actually want to, I actually want to pull these up for you so you can understand this. Cause I don't think I've ever shared this on here. And I realized, Oh, without sharing that to people, they don't really know what I mean by the value that they get from this. So what I want to know is these questions in advance. What areas of your business do you need to grow in? Which by the way, post those in the Grow Your Life community. What areas do you need to improve in? What have you tried already and what's working for you? What have you tried that's not working for you? What are your goals for a year from now, three years from now, five years from now? And so if I have those answers, you prepare them ahead of time. What I'll do is at the in the first 10 minutes of the 30 minute call, I'll have you download those to me and I'll ask any questions I have, or you'll be able to uh, text them to me through uh, Instagram Messenger and I can look at them and a- answer those questions as well through there. So if you win, you'll I'll, I'll send you those questions to you and you can answer them. But even if you don't win or you haven't won, please ask me questions through the Grow Your Life community on Facebook, on my Instagram, on my Facebook. I want to learn how I can help you more. And the more questions I get from people, the better I can serve people by making more content that helps people. It helps me help you better just by us having more of a conversation together. But to win a 30 minute coaching session with me, all you have to do to where we do a deep dive into your business for 30 minutes and we come up with an action plan of what you can use for the next three to six and even 12 months to get results. I'm serious. That's what I'm giving away. A full deep dive into your business. 30 minutes. That's it though. 
Uh, if you want to do more than 30 minutes, we can. you can uh, go to my website and click on work with me. And I actually have a link here to where you can apply uh, for coaching. You can apply now uh, to to do full consultation. And then we can go over that and 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 work on work on that, answering your questions. But if you want to win a free coaching session with me, go to my Instagram every single day within the first 10 minutes of me posting on Instagram. Leave hashtag grow your life in the comments on Instagram or anytime during the week. So I, I block it between the last podcast episode to sometime on Sunday afternoon. And then I see who left hashtag grow your life on Instagram. And I, whether it's in the first 10 minutes on Instagram on my feed or anytime during the week, just go post it. You can even post it on all my posts, hashtag grow your life. And I pick one winner every single week on Sunday on my Instagram stories. So go check my Instagram stories on Sunday. And I announce the winner. And then we'll connect through Instagram Messenger and answer your questions. We'll set a time. We'll schedule it. And then I'll call you on the phone. We'll go through 30 minutes of coaching. But to win, you have to leave hashtag grow your life on my Instagram within the first 10 minutes of me posting or on any of my posts during the week. I'll pick one winner per week to get on the phone with and do coaching. I believe in you. I know that you can accomplish your dreams. And I want to be here as a resource to help you do that. So have a good one, everybody, and we'll talk soon. Grow your life.